This is the range of the new plastic cook baits, or fake food as we're calling it. So to talk you through them, first of all, the yellow flavoured. It's very important to note that you've got two buoyancies in each of them. So we've got slow sinking, not completely sinking, but slow sinking. So when there's a hook attached, the hook will lay flat on the bottom and the bait will just be bending up above. And then a pop-up version, obviously, so you can keep the hook away from any muck on the bottom. This one is IB, that's illegal, and I'll let you work out the other one. That's Ali's number one flavour. If he really needs to get a bite, an IB goes on. We've used it in our pop-ups for years, and now we've transferred it through into the corn. And you can see the different sizes. We've got the corn, obviously, to start off with, then the larger maize, then a small dumbbell, that's eight mil, and then a 12 mil dumbbell, and there will be a 16 mil dumbbell as well in all of the colors. So slow sinking, pop-up, and then moving on to the white one, again, slow sinking those ones, and those are pop-ups. And the flavor on these is banoffee, which is a combination of different flavors, making it, um... oh, and I'm away. Well, how about that? Right in the middle of uh, talking about the banoffee, and uh, this is a banoffee on this left hand rod. Um, just a single grain of the maize, slow sinking. I had a couple on this last night before I wound in to get some sleep. Um, and this is a flavour that you've seen me using. Oh, he's probably going for it now. You've seen me using at Gigantica. Caught some massive fish on this flavour combination. And just like all the other ones, we've transferred it into the plastic hook baits. So all those years of experience are contained within the range. And we didn't see any point in just doing loads of different colours and loads of different flavours, so we've kept it to a small range, all of which have got a proven track record, and we'll get loads of bites. And it's important to use different colours uh, and different flavours, obviously, depending on where you're fishing, how clear the water is, how pressured the fish are, how much they've been hammered on particular colours. Oh, he's just doing me in some weed there. And on this particular session, I've had bites on yellow, white and pink. I've not tried the green yet. Uh, and I've also had bites on the uh, fishy dumbbells. So he's getting fairly close in now. We'll get this one in and then show you the rest of the range. Come on, in you get. Got him. Another one falls to the magic of the Bonoffi. Well, that was a turn up for the books, getting a bite on the Bonoffi right while I was talking about it. So obviously that one floating and sinking in all the sizes. And then the next flavour down is an absolute classic squid and fruit with a little bit of sweetener in it as well in that bright pink colour. That's one of Damien's real favourites, that one. And it's caught loads of fish for us on this session. And then the next one is citrus zing. That's a combination of three different citrusy flavours and some sweetener as well. And then this little fella is what we're calling fishy fish, a real pungent fishy combination for fishing over pellets. And what we've done, put some trout pellets in the edge, seen what they've looked like after a couple of hours, and they're that sort of washed out colour. So that's going to blend in perfectly with them. Perfect for fishing over beds of pellets and in PVA bags as well. And that comes only in the pellet shape, not in the corn shape, and in the two sizes you can see here, and the bigger one as well. And then finally, we've got unflavoured. So the yellow is going to come in slow sinking and pop up unflavoured, so you can put your own flavours on them. And as you can see here, we've got extender stops to match all of them so that they pull up inside the bait. You can't see the hair on the end of the bait and it looks as much like a natural free offering as possible. So that's the range. Let's have a look at the rigs to fish them on. Yes, another daytime bite on Bray's Nose 2. And uh, yet another fish on the pink slow sinking maze. Um, I swapped over to that because Jake had a couple of bites on it yesterday. Put it on one rod. Admittedly, this is in the middle of the baited area and uh, it's gone twice in quick succession. And uh, if I was really looking to build a hit, um, then I would probably swap another rod onto the pink to see if uh, I can get two rods going. 
Um, I'm surprised, to be honest, the other rods haven't gone. I had a couple of fish last night um, on the white Bonoffi maze. Uh, again, slow sinking. And uh, all our bites have come on the slow sinking rather than the pop-up. We're trying to keep everything as close to the lake bed as possible because the water is gin clear and we're fishing on a clean bottom. So a pop-up just stands out like a mile. Uh, if we were fishing over weed, then it would be longer hook links and a couple of grains on and fish as a pop-up just to keep that hook out of the weed. But um, the situation at the moment demands that we fish with slow sinking bottom baits. That fish is coming towards me now, pretty rapid. Got him! Another one on the plastic. Wicked. These are the slow sinking versions, perfect when there's no weed around, just on a nice clean bottom, whether it be sand or gravel, and all that's going to happen, the hook's going to lay flat on the bottom and the bait is going to lift just above. So you've got a little bit more buoyancy to make it go in their mouth easily, but you're not startling them. And this is particularly effective over a spotted area. If you've got loads of bait out there and your one's standing up above it all, it can get left. So we've got a size eight wide gate there, Fished on an IQ, it's a supernatural combi rig, the one that I really favour in clear water with a piece of the pink on there. Then the next one down, we've got an IQ combi rig again, but we've actually got the bait sitting on a micro rig swivel. Again, the hook's going to lay flat and the bait's just going to hover above it. And then exactly the same setup as before, but rather than a combination of materials, this is the end trap soft. And that one, again, on a size six curve, and then one of those dumbbells that's going to hover just above it, that's the fishy fish. And then on a nice stiff bit of material, if the bottom's really clean, then I would use a bit of hybrid stiff. It pushes everything away from the lead, and you can see it's set up exactly the same way. So we've got a bit of shrink tube kicking in on the eye of the hook to help the hook turn over and catch hold. And then we've got one of those IB dumbbells in 12 mil on the end there. That's just going to hover above it. And then the last one, that's the one I had the bite on. That's the Bonoffi maze again with a size six curve, and this time it's the end trap semi-stiff, which again pushes everything a little bit further away from the lead and causes the bites more instantly. So if you're fishing over a clean bottom where there's no weed, it's like gravelly or you've got some firm silt, then that's what I'd recommend. If you've got weed on the bottom, you need to be swapping over to a pop-up. So let's have a look at the rigs I'd use for that. This first rig is my absolute favourite pop-up rig. I've caught loads of fish on this absolutely everywhere. It's a size eight wide gape, tied with a semi-stiff end trap. And you can see there I've got a bit of shrink tube just to help the hook turn and catch hold. The rig ring is halfway down the hook, rather than being up by the bend as it would be with a slow sinker, it's down there so the hook sits over, cocks like a claw. And you see there's quite a small gap between the baits and the hook. And the baits themselves, the IB floating corn, is as buoyant as we can possibly make it for the size. And then the counterbalance is a small sinker with a little bit of putty moulded around that, and that'll just sink down nice and slowly and rest in the weed so the fish can get to it. And then the next one, we've got a bit of maize on there. This is the green zing one. Again, the hook's set up exactly the same way with the rig ring and everything, but this is a combi rig, so I've got IQ to supernatural there, but it sits exactly the same on the bottom. And then the next one is a larger hook, a size six wide gate this time. Two bits of corn wouldn't float that up off the bottom, so I've added a piece of foam underneath the piece of corn to give it a bit more buoyancy and hold that bigger hook up. So if you need a bigger hook because it's weedier or snaggier, that's what I recommend you do. And then finally, we've achieved the extra buoyancy using two bits of maize. It's larger, so it's obviously more buoyant than the corn, and that will still lift the size six wide gape up off the bottom there. And if I turn that over, you can see the extender stock disappears up inside the top of the bait, so you can't see the hair on the top of the bait. And the guys that I know that fish plastic all the time achieve that in a different way so that the fish can't differentiate between that one and any of the free offerings, and they believe it gets more bites and who are we to argue? So that's using it with a pop-up. Let's have a look at how to tip off a boilie.
Chipping off a boilie with a piece of plastic is an absolutely classic way to catch carp. It's probably caught hundreds of thousands of them all over the world. This is how I fish it. So first of all, we've got a piece of the Bonofi plastic corn. This is the pop-up stuff on top of a, a relatively small boilie, probably a 12 mil boilie. And basically the boilie's gonna lay on the bottom and the corn's just gonna make it sit up just like that. So the hook's laying flat still. It's not too obvious, but it's enough to draw them in and get you more bites. And I've found by using a bit of white over a load of dark bait, you can get bites a lot quicker. And then moving up, this is obviously a larger hook, larger boilie. Um, in this case, I'm using a piece of the plastic maze in the pop-up version. And basically this will sit again. So the hook is laying flat on the bottom, but the bait is just hovering above. And by tipping something off, you're basically getting two different types of attraction. You've got the plastic working for you and the boilie as well. And then finally, you can see one of the dumbbells there. Rather than being on lengthways, it's on sideways. And can you can see how the curve of the dumbbell fits perfectly on top of a boilie. Again, this is the pop-up version, so the hook's going to lay flat and that's just going to hover above it. So it gives a bit more buoyancy, which helps the hook go in better. You've got a couple of types of attraction, and if you've got crayfish and that sort of stuff about, even if the boilie gets eaten, you've still got the piece of plastic on there, which can get you a bite on its own. So that's the new range of plastic baits under the fake food banner from Calder. They're going to be released in stages, so you're going to get a couple of colours and flavours at each time, and the first ones will be hitting the shelves by the time you watch this DVD. <laughs>